Fasciation is a condition of abnormal growth in vascular plants in which the apical meristem becomes elongated perpendicularly to the direction of growth, thus producing flattened, ribbon-like, crested, or elaborately contorted tissue. Let's back up a bit. To help me explain what's going on, I'm going to show some images out of my college textbook, Plant Biology, by Linda Graham, James Graham, and Lee Wilcox, all from the University of Michigan. Also, any sources found online will be cited and linked in the description below. Other photos are either my own or used with permission of the owner. Special thanks to everyone that shared your photos for this video. Watch all the way to the end for a fascinatingly fasciated slideshow, and remember to subscribe for more cool science-based gardening videos. Mary, Mary, quite contrary, how does your garden grow? With dividing cells and those that swell, and meristems all in a row. Plant growth happens in two ways, by cell enlargement, and by the production of new cells and tissues by meristems which is what we are going to talk about in this video. All plants have growth points where primary growth occurs. These are always found at the tip of each root, either the base or the end of the shoot, and in some cases along the stem at the nodes. These primary growth points are called apical meristems. Root apical meristems increase the length of the roots. Shoot apical meristems increase the height or length of the shoots. Meristems located at the nodes are called axillary buds and can remain dormant or they can grow into thorns, secondary branches, or other structures. Woody plants also have additional meristems under their bark. These secondary meristems are called vascular cambium and cork cambium, which are responsible for creating wood and bark and for expanding the girth of the plant. You get the idea. Growth happens because of cellular division in the meristems, and meristems create cells that become stems, leaves, roots, flowers, and every structure of the plant. Look at this one, it's growing all funny like. That one is fasciated. What's fasciated? Fasciated is a, when the apical meristem of a plant has a growth defect. It means it grows funny and crooked. Okay, so that's where cell division happens. Now I'll show you what happens when cell division goes wrong. Normally, the apical meristems produce the cylindrical, typical growth that we all know and love. But when a meristem is fasciated, also called crested, it becomes elongated and produces flat, contorted growth that is super cool! The results can appear flattened, crested, or elaborately contorted. Sometimes a flower will appear stretched or twisted, or they may be multiple flower heads conjoined together. I love stumbling upon a fasciated plant. It's like finding a hidden treasure. My favorite specimens that I've ever seen are lilies, and other tall fasciated flower stalks because the stalk itself is flat but it will have dozens more flowers than usual the result is incredible fasciation can happen in almost any vascular plant and has been documented in at least 107 different plant families it's most common in cactaceae asteraceae or compositaceae fabaceae or leguminosae ongraceae and rosaceae I also love the cacti that look like brains. So now I'm going to repeat the definition that I started this video with, and I bet now it will make a lot more sense. Fasciation is a condition of abnormal growth in vascular plants in which the apical meristem becomes elongated perpendicularly to the direction of growth, thus producing flattened, ribbon-like, crested, or elaborately contorted tissue. All right, now we know what it is, but what on earth causes it? So there are a few things that can cause a plant to fasciate, but none are well understood as to actually why. And more often than not, there's no clear cause and appears completely by chance. Sometimes an infection can trigger fasciation, such as bacteria, fungi, viruses, or phytoplasmas. 
Fasciation is not contagious, but if it is caused by bacteria, then that bacterium can be transferred through wounds or vectored with water from an infected plant to a healthy one and potentially spread the resulting fasciation. Sometimes being eaten by an insect or animal can cause the remaining growth to fasciate or other forms of mechanical damage like a stem being broken or damage caused by environmental factors such as extreme weather. Chemical damage may cause it as well. Most often though, it's either a hormonal imbalance in the meristem or a recessive gene. And that's the best because if it's genetic, then the plant may pass the trait to its offspring. In other words, save the seeds. The degree that the progeny will express this recessive trait is often dependent on environmental factors, but it's always fun to plant seeds and just see what happens. And the last burning question I'm sure some of you have, will this hurt my plants? No. While fasciation may be shocking to see and might look like a severe abnormality, even a disability, it has almost no effect on the health of your plant and no special care is needed. You should continue to care for your plant as if it was completely normal because a fasciated plant will have the exact same cultural requirements as the normal specimen right next to it. Sometimes the shape of the twisting may hold moisture or humidity, which can create an environment for mold and mildew, or it can harbor a few extra insects that like to hide in such places. The euphorbia stem that I've been showcasing throughout this video survived for two years but eventually succumbed to the earwig family that liked the shelter it provided. I eventually pruned that branch out, but the plant is fine and healthy to this day. So those are a couple of things to watch out for if you want the fasciation to survive long term. There are some potential side effects that can be a problem, but the overall health of the plant will not be affected directly by the fasciation. Next, I have a collection of several cool photos, so don't go anywhere just yet. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below, and if you liked this content, remember to subscribe for more cool gardening videos. I can't say I'll do many quite like this, because this format was a lot of work, and I don't have this much spare time when it isn't winter, but I will do my best to bring you something planty every week to your sub box. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the garden.